So the diesel particulate filter has just proved to be the gift that keeps on giving. And the even better news is it's now coming to just about everything with a combustion engine. So if you've got a gasoline or petrol powered car, it's quite likely that newer models will have a particulate filter in the exhaust system. So we just wait and see how bad these are gonna be. Are they gonna be as notoriously bad as the diesel particulate filters or have manufacturers learnt from the mistakes they made on those? So this video, we're just gonna discuss these particular filters, what they are, how to identify them, and the differences between a diesel particulate filter and this new particulate filter that they're fitting to all other combustion engines. So you're probably excited and pleased like me to discover it's not just modern diesel cars that have a particulate filter. These are also being fitted to gasoline petrol powered cars in various regions. And as time's going on, the emission standards are becoming ever more stringent. Manufacturers are looking to these particulate filters. So this is just a heads up really to look out for these particulate filters on your gasoline or your petrol powered engine. It's going to go into some of the common issues that we see with them. We've only only had them around for a relatively short time so hopefully the manufacturers have ironed out most of the problems that they've had with the diesel particulate filters and we won't see them being such an issue with the gasoline or petrol powered engines but I'm not holding my breath there's a big difference between the way gasoline engines work and the way diesel engines work so first of all, we've got confusing terms. Some regions of the world will call this fuel that you use gasoline or gas. So it becomes a gasoline particulate filter, a GPF. Other regions, it's called petrol. So here in the UK, we put petrol in our cars. So we have the petrol particulate filter a PPF. Now in Germany, they've kind of come up with a term that sidesteps this confusion. It looks at the cycle of the modern engine, the auto cycle. So it is now known as an auto particulate filter or an OPF. And I've even heard people referring to it as an exhaust or an engine particulate filter, an EPF. So wouldn't it just be nice if we could just standardize everything and use the same term for parts? We get this confusion otherwise. So in this video, I'm just going to be referring to them as particulate filters. We're not referring to diesel particulate filters in this video. I've done enough other videos going into the problems, the intricacies and how to look after the diesel particulate filters. So be sure to check those out. But for now, we'll just talk about your gasoline or your petrol powered car. So when were these particulate filters first introduced? Well, Mercedes introduced them in an engine around about 2014. So we're talking about the mid 2010s onwards. Volkswagen, BMW and Peugeot have all started fitting them as well. And generally, most modern engines on performance cars now that were dated from 2017 onward have some kind of particulate filter fitted to them. So on some of the Volkswagen engines, this will look like two filters side by side. So in order to maximize the exhaust flow and keep the turbo spooling up, they've changed the design rather than have one large one. They've got two smaller ones, which is an interesting method of dealing with the associated problems. But there is, as always, going to be a lot of variation between different manuals manufacturers, how they design these systems. And it's going to be interesting to see what happens as these mileages start clocking up, whether these become as big a problem as we had with diesel particulate filters in the past. So exhaust gas temperatures vary considerably between diesel and gasoline or petrol powered engines. Diesel tends to burn at very high temperatures. That's just the nature of the fuel and the way these engines work. And the key thing here is that you need heat in these particular filters in order to burn off the particles that they collect. So just a refresher really, the particulate filter captures the particles coming out of the engine, so carbon particles, these unburned elements from the fuel air mix that goes into the engine, and it captures those. As it heats up, it burns them off into a harmless ash residue. Now, certain additives in oils and coolants as well can actually cause problems with ash buildup inside your particulate filter. So you need to pay particular attention to the type of oil and coolant your manufacturer is recommending. If you go to the wrong one, you are going to definitely have problems with ash buildup within the particulate filter that even the regeneration cycle is not going to clear. So your diesel engine does produce larger particles, which is why really the focus has been on diesel engines and getting them clean. Now we're looking at gasoline or petrol powered cars and the particle emissions on those are already much smaller. 
So the engines run cooler, the particles are smaller. So generally speaking now, your particulate filter is going to be smaller than it would have been on a diesel engine. Now, interestingly, you generate more heat when you lift off the throttle than when you have your foot flat on the throttle. So as the engine runs lean, the exhaust gas temperatures climb up. So look at your manufacturer's recommendations on how to maintain your particulate filter in good order. And just following those steps should really, really help to prolong the life of this particulate filter. You shouldn't have the problems that were associated with those early versions. So in the main, these filters are being located closer to the engine, so the exhaust gas temperatures are much higher. The overall design of the engine is much cleaner, so there is less soot being produced by the engine as it burns in the first place. In most cases, you'll get some kind of warning light on the dashboard that there is some kind of regeneration process needed. And you just need to follow your manufacturer's instructions, which generally involves driving for a period of time at a set speed and meeting certain conditions, typically that the engine is warm and up to temperature. Just as with diesel particulate filters, your particulate filter is going to clog up up more quickly if you do short journeys or lots of journeys on cold engines. They are the typical problem areas which produce excessive amounts of soot that collects the carbon builds up within the particulate filter. If you have faulty sensors in your engine, if the engine is misfiring, if there's some problem with the fuel injectors, these can all lead to a dirty burn going on inside the engine and clog these filters up more quickly. So keep an eye on the warning lights, keep an eye on the error codes that you spot that come up when you download them from the OBD2 port. So your modern particulate filter is often incorporated within a catalyst. So we might even refer to that as a four-way catalyst. So not only is it catalyzing and changing the chemical properties properties of the exhaust gases, it is also collecting and burning off these carbon and soot deposits that come out of the engine, converting them into harmless ash. We're not seeing the need for additives, so your diesel engine typically uses some kind of add blue in order to keep the emission systems happy, and we're not seeing those sorts of things introduced in gasoline engines, which isn't surprising as we're dealing with different fuels and the engines do work in very different ways. So it's going to be interesting. I just wonder now if engines are actually cleaning the air if the air is coming out of the exhaust with less particles and less pollutants than it went into the engine to start with. Just judging by the way that legislation is going and the ever tightening emissions regulations, we could well be looking at a world where driving your car actually improves the environment. I'm struggling to find any specific stats on pollutants in the air that I can compare with your typical combustion engine output. So if there are any nerds out, and I know we've got a few subscribing to the channel, please let me know in the comments what your thoughts are on these new particulate filters, whether you think we are at this point now where the car is breathing cleaner air than it's first taking in. Please boot that like button because that really does help us to get out there. I hope you've enjoyed this video. I've lined this video up for you that you should find interesting. And please subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so because we'd love you to stay tuned. Thanks for watching.